Today I'm going to show you how to create this e-commerce store inside of a Rails application. It's going to cover everything including the screen you see here with the styling, the uh, demo products here, the ability to view all the products, add them to the cart, go through an entire checkout workflow, and log in your customers, etc. You get the idea. You don't need me to demo the whole thing. Basic idea is we're just gonna be creating a new Rails app. We're gonna add a gem to it. We're gonna go through the setup process and then I'm gonna show you how to configure it a little bit because it uses a Rails engine. You're gonna have to do a little bit extra when you wanna access the user accounts. But I think that's a worthy trade-off considering how much this offers out of the box. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start by just creating a new Rails app. I'm just gonna call mine video. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and CD into my Rails app and then I'm gonna type code dot to open up a text editor. Now this text editor isn't really necessary right now because we're just gonna be running console commands, but hopefully you can see what gets generated as we go through it. So I'm gonna expand the app views and the layouts for now and then we'll step through the installation process. I'll have a link to the GitHub repository for this gem. This is the Solidus gem. It's a Spree-based e-commerce product. And the reason why I like it is because although it uses Spree, it is uh, compatible with Rails 7. So we can just go ahead and add this to our gem files. Now you can either add it to your gem file by going down to your gem file and just popping it in at the bottom here with a gem Solidus. Uh, alternatively, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. Uh, alternatively, in your console, you can just run a bundle add and then the name of the gem, and that will also work. But because we already have it added manually to our gem file there, we just have to run a bundle command to install that gem. Okay, now that we have that installed, the only other thing we have to do, if I zoom in a bit, is run the bin slash rails solidus install command. So let me full screen this, I'll up the font size a bit more, and then I'll go ahead and run this command. Now this command and the follow-up command are going to take quite a while to run. So don't be surprised if you're waiting for a little bit as it runs through and creates everything. Now we're at an interesting point here. I have to resize my console because of how this is working. It tells us that we can choose to use different front ends. Now you can either go with none and make it like an API only front end. You can go with the default Solidus front end or you can go with the starter front end. We're gonna go with the starter front end. So we're gonna highlight this, right click to copy, and then right click to paste. It's gonna look a little bit buggy for me, but it should just be pasting in the solidus underscore starter underscore front end. Once you have that pasted in or typed in, you should then be good to go and it'll start installing everything. And if we take a look inside of our VS code as this is running, you can see all of the gems it's adding. Okay, now we're at the next important point. It has run through and seeded everything. Now we have to create our admin user. For this, we're just gonna go with the default of admin at example.com and a password of test123. You can of course change this to whatever you would like. Okay, and now we can see we have Solidus successfully installed. I'm gonna go over to my demo app, hit Control C to stop the server. And then I'm gonna come over to the uh, application we just made and I'm gonna type Rails S just to see what we currently have. When we try to run the application and we refresh, it should take us right into the store, but it'll be a little bit slow to load for me because I'm running all of this out of WSL in my dev environment. But here you can see we have the exact same thing that we just had working inside of this brand new application. So if we come in here and we search for Ruby, we should hopefully find the Ruby merchandise, which it looks like that's what we're finding. We can log in, of course, uh, either with uh, a new user account or the admin account, or we can come to slash admin to go into the admin panel, which is gonna be admin at example.com by default. And I think the password was, uh, it might've been pass one, two, three or it was test one, two, three. So let's try test one, two, three. Yeah, it was test one, two, three. So here we can see what the backend admin panel looks like. Now, a couple things to note, if you're interested in adding an additional payment option, you're gonna wanna look at something like Solidus Stripe, which is a Stripe integration. You can go ahead and run the uh, Solidus Stripe install command if that's something that interests you. So in this case, it would be these two commands. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the server, clear the console. I'm gonna right click to paste in the first one to add the Solidus Stripe gem to my gem file, which you'll see it pop in right there. 
And then once that's done, we can go ahead and run the bundle exec rails g solidus underscore install command or solidus underscore stripe colon install command. And then hopefully that'll go through and install everything. Now I haven't tested this yet. I thought it'd be cool if we just did this uh, live without any sort of uh, rehearsal because I'm a glutton for punishment. So that has generated the migrations. I guess now we have to do a rails db colon migrate command to actually migrate the database. Okay, and now let's run a rails s to start the server again. We'll come into the admin panel. Okay, looks like that finished refreshing. Now we have to go into settings, payments, and payment methods in the admin panel. So let's come over to the admin panel. We'll go down to settings, payments, and then we're gonna to wanna to look at payment methods and we're gonna to wanna to click new payment method. I'm gonna full screen this. And it looks like we do in fact have our Stripe credit card settings here. So I guess we just go through this and we add in whenever we need to. It looks like they also have some options for configuring it via the database if that's something you're interested in which of course you're probably gonna to need to do for your Stripe secret key and your public key. So this is definitely something to take a look at. I don't have a Stripe API key set up right now, uh, but this seems fairly straightforward. I can always do a follow-up video on that if that's something that you would need. But uh, for now, what I wanna cover is sort of how to configure this a little bit. So by generating this entire application, if we come into our app, assets, style sheets, and our spree, this is where you'll find all of your uh, spree slash solidus stuff. So in all of your folders, you're gonna see a spree folder and spree is your e-commerce section. So if you wanna come into your views, spree and your home and your index.html, this is where it renders the homepage for the application when you're on the solidus store. And of course, there's your product section. And I mean, there's so much to go through. You're probably just going to have to look through it yourself to customize it as you need. But one of the things I want to cover is right now, all of this is happening at the root of our application. And maybe we want this to all run off of a slash store route. So the easiest way to do that is to come into the config and the routes.rb. I'm going to hit F11 to full screen. I'm going to hit control plus to zoom in one. Um, we have two different blocks here. We have the spree core engine block right here, and we have the Rails application routes block. This is your regular route where it mounts the engine, and then this is your entire store logic right here. So we do need to actually access this to do a link to, but what I wanna do down here is just create a route to the application. So inside of our Rails application routes draw, I'm gonna do a route to a pages home. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna stop the server and I'm gonna do a Rails G controller. I'll hit F11 to full screen, pages, and I'll give it a home action. And the reason why I'm doing this is just so that we have a custom controller to set as the uh, home of our application. So I'm gonna full screen this again. I'm gonna get rid of this get pages slash home inside of the spree core because I don't want it in there. And instead, I'm gonna make the root the pages home down here. Now, if we read through these comments, I'll hit control B to hide the side panel. You can see here that if you wanna change where the engine is mounted, the engine being your spree e-commerce stuff, you just change what the colon at is. So we're gonna change this uh, at colon quotes to be instead of slash, uh, we'll just go with slash store. We can save this, we'll exit out of this, and then we'll refresh, and it'll take us to our default homepage. Now, if we go to slash store, that'll take us to our store again. And from here, we can do everything else we just did. We can go to slash admin, and that'll take us to uh, the admin page at slash store slash admin but maybe we want to, on the homepage here, create a link to the store. So let's go ahead and let's do that because we don't wanna to have to hard code this. Inside of our views pages home, we'll just create a little bit of boilerplate code that we can use to do these links. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a P tag. I'll close the P tag. And then inside of this P tag, I'm just gonna say go to, and then we'll just say a link to the store. And then this is gonna be your spree path. Because remember, this entire spree section is sort of a second uh, application in here because it's an engine. So when we say go to the spree path, it's the same thing as saying go to the root path. But instead of the root path here, because the root is now 
for spree, it's at slash store. But the root path for the actual spree is going to be the home uh, controller index action inside of spree. So if we come up here to the uh, controllers, spree, we're going to look for the home controller. And then this is the index action of the spree home controller because it's inside of the spree module. So whenever we go there, instead of doing like root path or, you know, spree store path, it's just going to be the spree path. And then everything else that builds off of this is going to be relative to that path. But let's go ahead and test this, make sure it works. So we now have our link. If we click on that, it'll take us to our store. I'm going to go back and then I'm going to hit enter because it's uh, giving me some turbo issues. And now what happens if we want to check if we have a current user session? If you paid attention during the installation process, you might have seen that it used the spree auth instead of a uh, just default device user. And that all runs through device, but because it's all mounted in the engine, it's a little bit different how you access it. So let's go ahead and let's do a check to see if we have a current user. If we do, we'll just say yes. Otherwise, we'll just say no. And then we can do a percent n down here and we can get rid of these equal signs because my brain was on autopilot and i wasn't thinking we'll come over here we'll refresh and you'll see that we get an error and thankfully the error is pretty uh, helpful it tells us hey current user doesn't exist did you mean current underscore spree underscore user and if you've extended device in any way before you're familiar with this how you can have different types of users that are sort of scoped to a different thing so here because it's the spree route or the spree root route uh, it's just going to be running through the spree engine so it's the current underscore spree underscore user if we refresh that you can see that i'm currently logged in so how do i get that user's email well we can do what we normally do i'm going to do a p tag and then i'll just say logged in as and then we'll throw something in here i guess so we want to say we're logged in as the uh, current underscore spree underscore user dot email. So same thing we did up here and then dot email, just like we would with a regular device. And that'll give us a uh, logged in as admin at example dot com. OK, so now how do we create a log out link? So to do this, what we can do is just type link to log out. And here it takes a little bit of uh, experimenting if you're not familiar with how this works, but because all of this is under the spree engine in our routes here, what we can actually do is we can just grab spree and just call a method on it. So we can come back to our home. I'll close the home controller and we can just do spree dot and then whatever path we want. So we'll say log out path. So by default, if we had a route like this in a regular Rails app where we had a slash logout path, we would just do logout underscore path. But here, because it's all under spree, it's all going to be prefixed with spree dot whenever we grab one of these paths. We can do this and refresh and we'll run into the same issue we usually run into with a Rails app, which is it's trying to do a get request to a delete path. So let's grab some data and then open up some braces, open it on a new line. And let's say this has a turbo underscore method colon. And then we'll say this is a delete method uh, because we can't do method delete because for some reason Rails is full of spaghetti code. But that allows us to log out just fine with uh, turbo working just fine. So now that we have that, we can maybe do a P tag here, say we're not logged in and close the P tag. And we'll go ahead and refresh. So there we go. We're not logged in. Now let's create a link to the login page and we'll make this the spree.login path. And then we can copy this, paste it. And instead we'll say this is create account and this will take us to the sign up underscore path. Once we have that, we can go in here and refresh. Our login will take us to the store login page where we can log in. And the create account will take us to the store sign up page where we can create an account. And just like that, we have an application that has a store attached to it. Yeah, hopefully this was interesting or helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.